Welcome to Access 2010 Database Objects. I'm your trainer, Lori. So what are a database objects in Access? Simply what creates Access. These are all the building blocks that go into making a database. Database objects is like a bunch of toys in a, in a child's toy box. The first one we're going to look at is the table. It's like that yellow bucket that kids like to put all those blocks into. Well, I want you to think of the table as the bucket and the data as the blocks. And if I were to take all those blocks and put it in the bucket and swirl it around and dump it out, what would I have? A big mess. <laughs> and that's why we have those cool lids that go with it. Uh, the query, which answers questions about the data. The report, which is the paper way of sharing data and a form, which is the electronic way of viewing the data and doing data entry, are nothing more than lids looking into the bucket. So if I were to look at a query, I am looking at the real data in real time. Just so you know, all that data that we're looking at is not a copy. It is the real data. It's just a way of looking into the bucket. Now the next one is a macro, which is like a MP3 player. Now normally I would say a macro is like a tape recorder. In Word and Excel it's just as simple as recording uh, on an old tape recorder. You simply click record and you click stop and you click play. In Access it's a little more complex, so while it does multiple steps, for example it allows me to put a button on a form that does two or three or four things, uh, it's a little more complex than just saying record. Uh, and we'll look at that when we get to macros. And then finally, the last module, uh, last object we're going to look at is a module, which is um, like a puzzle. It's a, it helps make the form and the database even more interactive, and that's called code. Modules is code, visual basic for applications code. Remember, tables are the most important object in the database. They are the bucket that stores the, the data, so we have to have a table. You can view your table in data sheet view. In this case, you can see all the data. In fact, doesn't it look like an Excel spreadsheet? That's why people like this. It, it feels comfortable, familiar to them. However, you can store more, more data. Uh, there is a limitation of 255 fields or columns. And of course, Excel 2010 has more capacity than that now. However, uh, in Excel, you can only have a little over a million records. In Access, you can have as many records as you can store as long as your entire database doesn't take more than two gigabytes. That means you could have several million records. So as long as you don't have a lot of fields or columns of information, you can store millions of records. I would suggest that you create your, uh, your table using Design View. And then you come in and you write your field name, and you must choose a data type. The description and the field properties are good to have, but they're not required. They would take some time, and it will make it more personalized. In fact, properties is the back door into code. And if you can set your properties, then you might be able to uh, do what you want it to do without ever having to write a macro or a module. But this is what our table looks like in Design View. You only look here when you're creating the table. You rarely look in here afterwards. However, some people don't want to actually have their data in Access at all, and that's fine. If you feel more comfortable with it in Excel, or if you have it in some other kind of database, some open database connectivity, then you can use the external data. Now, you have a couple of options. You can either link or import. If you link, let's say that we leave our data in Excel and also use Access for the forms and the reports, now I have one database with two entrances. In other words, if I make a change in Access to the data, it will update the Excel spreadsheet and vice versa. So I have one database with two entrances. That's a good thing. However, if I import, the only reason I would import is because Excel isn't cutting it anymore. It's, it's just not big enough to uh, do what I want it to do. So I would no longer use the Excel spreadsheet. I would only use the Access. Otherwise, you can have two databases with two different amounts of data. And that is dangerous. I've done that before, and I can't remember which one is the updated one. And So that's, that's not a good thing. The next tool is Forms. And this object is uh, a way to make your data entry more user friendly, uh, because sometimes it's um, you know it's, it's a lot of work to do data entry, and so if you can make it as easy as possible, 
you can see how easy it would be to f uh, put the data in the right place. I can see right where the first name and the last name goes. Plus, I have, this is a little more complex, I have tabs up here so I can move uh, around in it a little easier. To create a form, make sure that you've clicked on the table or query first. Don't open it, just click on it and then go up to create form and you have an instant form. Look how pretty it is in 2010. Um, I, my data entry is very obvious, plus I also have a subform down here with more information. You can look at your form in design view. Even though a Access created it for you, you can still go in and make any changes that you want. And so if you come into design view, it's a little daunting if you're not familiar with it, but the good news is this is where you can see your property sheet. So again, you can make it more personalized, that backdoor into code, without even having to open up the actual uh, Visual Basic. The layout view is new in 2010, and this allows us to move things around without having to uh, change everything. Uh, for example, if I want to um, move um, employee ID so that it's the last field, I can simply click and drag it down here. It makes it a little easier because it has um, uh, buckets where everything goes. Now this form is a little more complex uh, in creating, but it's uh, the last thing that you would do in a database. This is a startup form so that when I first come into my database, I can just click the button that uh, allows me to see what I want to see. I don't have to try to figure out where to go. So uh, they're very useful, and you would create it in Design View using this tool called the Command button. And uh, you can either have it do one event, or you can have it do multiple events by tying it to a macro or to a module, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. The next tool, the next object in an Access database is the query. And this is the most powerful. This is the one that you're going to be in the most. Uh, and you'll probably be creating queries until you stop using the database. Because the queries answer the questions you have about your data. Once you get all that data in there, you're going to want to know, well, who ordered within the last 30 days? Uh, what um, employees have not been updated yet on their, de on their uh, computer? It allows you to mine for data. A data is just big piles of raw information. But when you can render it down and find just the information you seek, that's called mining for data. And so it essentially hides what you don't care about. You don't want to just delete it. You want to just hide it uh, for, for next time. And then you can use this query to create a form or report. This is what I call the workhorse of the database, but uh, they don't use horses so much on farms anymore, so it's really a tractor. So it does the work for you. We create a query using create query design. I prefer the design view. There are other options. But then it asks which table or query would you like to build your query from. So you can build a query on a query or straight from a table. And then the table will show at the top. This is called our relationship grid. And down below, this is called our query by example pane. We want to pull fields from the query, from the table, down into the query by example grid. And you can see that there are criteria on the criteria row. In this case, I want active employees that have not been completed and do not have any issues. But also, look at this one. Now, this one has a little more going on. That's because it's a parameter. Because of this code, it will create a box so that I can enter which office. I don't have to see all the offices. I can choose which office every time I open the query. Very convenient. That's called a parameter. In fact, there's multiple kinds of queries. We just looked at select and parameter, but there's also action queries that move or change your data. Query, a wizard, which uh, helps you find information. Crosstab, which is a lot like a pivot table in Excel and SQL or SQL, Structured Query Language. These are for um, code. You would write them in code, and they're for more advanced queries, especially if you're uh, trying to find information in a mainframe database and you're using Access to pass through and find the information. The next object that we have are reports. Now, reports aren't as important as they used to be. I can tell you, I've had clients pay me to create databases strictly for the report. And that's uh, generally some paper uh, product. Uh, for example, I had um, a, a client that wanted to be able to 
give to the government a report showing that they were not um, sending uh, excess emissions into the atmosphere. This is a quarterly report that they had to do and the database was strictly created to make that report. But most people I find today want to simply export the data into another format. Either they're going to look at the data in the database or they want it exported into something else. Uh, so instead of just creating a paper report that you would print, uh, for example, I might send it to Excel or uh, as a PDF or even email it. And you have some other options as well. And remember our macros. That makes our forms more interactive and it's like a tape recorder. But you can use it on a command button like I showed you earlier, or you can put it right here on the quick access toolbar. And when I hover over this newly created button, I can see exactly what that macro is going to do. Or a trigger, like an event. For example, if I check in the married field, then another a form opens up. And so this is in properties, you would set the trigger uh, to happen on click, and it would open up a form. You create macros under Create Macros, and then you choose the action that you want it to do. If you don't see the action that you want, you now look in the catalog and find it. It's a little bit different from the older version, the 2003 version. And modules, as I mentioned, is code. This is the Visual Basic for applications. So again, uh, this gives us even more control uh, on a trigger. And uh, if you choose an event like uh, on click, you'll see one of your options is event procedure. And so how do you create that procedure? Well, you have to put it in a module. A module is a sheet for code. So I create a module, and then I can create a procedure to go inside the module. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.